I figured uh, getting here at uh, quarter to 11, we would probably be fighting a lot of people. But you know what? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad getting here at all. We cannot see the heads yet, the four great presidents that we have had. So we're going to do a little bit of touring. We'll keep you guys informed on what and where and what we're going to do. All right, we'll catch you later. Bye. Yeah, so anyway, I'm not going to tell you where we're at because it's not that hard to figure out where we're at. We're going to go on our self-guided tour. It's pretty cool. When you work camp up here, you get what's called a, a VIP card. These little purple cards and you just show them with ID and you get all kinds of free admissions and tours and stuff like that. It's, it's a nice little perk. Nice little perk. Never thought I'd ever see it in person. I've always seen it in books. It's just amazing. Almost makes you get choked up looking at them.
All right, so there's one of the sculptor's chairs. I don't know, babe, can you imagine uh, sitting in that hanging off the side of a cliff? No, Me it'd either. make something, it'd be like chewing on my, <clears throat> no, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Are you saying it would have a peaked middle by the time they were done? Oh yeah, there'd be a lot of slivers gone. <laughs> Okay, wow, it says over 450,000 tons of rock were removed from the mountain to make the faces of Mount Rushmore. And they removed over 90% of it with dynamite. Pretty incredible stuff. The preservation of the sacred fire of liberty and the destiny of the Republican model of government are justly considered as deeply, perhaps as finally staked, on the experiment entrusted to the hands of the American people. Words spoken by George Washington on his inauguration as the first president of the United States. Pretty clever they have these um, boards that tell you about each of the different presidents that's up there and they're strategically located right underneath their head so each president's looking directly down on the board that tells a little bit about him and his life and how he contributed to this country it's pretty cool so we're getting a little closer on the presidential you can start seeing the uh, <laughs> the chips in it where they were chipping away with the rocks You can see all the chips and everything right on his shoulder and his lapel. Is that our back way up huh? Looking straight up his snot locker. We're pretty stinking close. This is the presidential trail. I don't know what it all gets you, but you see where they had to drill down through. See the bit marks on the rocks. There's a good one right there where the drill went down through and they shoved the dynamite in the holes. Taking a breather for a minute here. <laughs> you see, a little flush. We're having a breather. We're not taking one. <laughs> yeah, this will really make you appreciate our country. And what they did to make it our country. Yeah, they ought to start doing field trips here. They really should, instead for of colleges. Yes, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Get history back into college at least. And teach them the true history too, not this. I know we're getting watered political. Down. We're we're not going to say much about it, but it is really, it's really neat. If you ever get a chance. Highly recommended. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's really cool. It uh, really gets to you. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. They say they built it to instill a sense of patriotism, and it does. Yeah, there's a few people that I know, professional people, <clears throat> that need to come and listen to some of this stuff. And Maybe Congress needs to take a field trip here. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, a, be good. That'd be a good idea. Congress should. Remember what they're supposed to be here for. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Yeah, no more political stuff. Nope. <laughs>
right, so we've got Tipsy Marlin's tips for Mount Rushmore. Um, the little, let me hold it up here. These wands, they're part of the self-guided tour. You can rent them and they come with a little booklet that tells you where to, um, what number to push at the different stops. And it gives you a lot of um, in-depth information about the history of Mount Rushmore, the area, the um, creator of Mount Rushmore, the president, um, really makes it a more in-depth experience. Um, if you can, do the presidential walk. It's a mile round trip. It takes you right up underneath their noses. Right under their snot lockers. If they had nose hair, you'd see it. And uh, it's, um, it's a little steep, it's up and down. And there's about 250 steps, but if you're capable of doing it, absolutely do it. Um, it's worth the walk. And then afterwards, definitely reward yourself with some ice cream here at the cafe. And it wasn't bad. I don't know if it was the kid that was given scoops or what, but he loaded it on and it was $6 for both of us. I mean, so 12, I guess, but it was, it was a lot of ice cream. And you can sit and have lunch in this neat little air conditioned cafe and look right out at the president. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Great place. Good. What? Maybe a half day visit? Yeah. You could if, if you spend a half a day here, you'll see everything. Yeah. Um, Unless you go shop and then you'll be here a lot more. <laughs> right. <laughs> but well worth the visit. That's it. That's all I got to say about it. Well, okay then. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson's words from the Declaration of Independence evidence the enlightened thinking of our third president. And while through the prism of history, it is easy to find irony in these statements of equality from a member of the slave-owning Virginia aristocracy, it perhaps best illustrates the journey of America, born of lofty and enlightened ideals in a period of time that was less than idyllic. America's journey is not always a straight line moving upward, but we move upward nonetheless, forever rooted in the stirring words set forth by Thomas Jefferson's pen. Whew, good day. Get here early in the summer, it gets busy. We're lucky, we only had one tour bus. I can't imagine what this place is like if it's full. But, you know how they say you learn something new every day? We were wondering what the whole thing was with the Thomas Jefferson ice cream. And we learned, not only was he the primary author of the Declaration of Independence, but he also made the first ice cream recipe in the United States. So, all of our yummy ice cream, we owe to Thomas Jefferson. Thank you, brother. <laughs>